Irene Dunn, Fred McMurray Show. Starring Irene Dunn as Susan and Fred McMurray as George. Together in a gay, new, exciting comedy adventure, Bright Star. Yes, it's the Irene Dunn, Fred McMurray Show. Starring Irene Dunn as Susan Armstrong, owner and editor of the Hillsdale Morning Star, and Fred McMurray as George Harvey, the paper's ace reporter. Today we join Susan and George at the railroad station, where they are awaiting a visit from Susan's teenage cousin, Emily. Is it, George? Uh, four fifteen, Susan. Trains due any minute. Frankly, George, this is one visit I'm not looking forward to. <laughs> Good old Emily. Never a dull moment. Uh, what is it with her this time? Her mother and father anxious to break up some silly little romance she's having. Uh, Personally, I think they're taking it much too seriously. Well, we'll soon find out. I hear the train coming. <sighs> Emily's not here yet. Why, Sammy? Joining the welcoming committee? I hope you don't mind, Miss Armstrong. I've always had a soft spot for Emily. Uh, <laughs> doesn't Emily consider you a little young for her, Sammy? That was her last visit. I'm two months older now. Oh. Well, here it comes. Do you see her, George? No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there she is, up by that car ahead oh, yeah. there. Emily! Emily, over here, Emily! Uh, she sees us. How definitely sweet of you to meet me. How are you, Emily? Oh, fine. And George. Dear, good George. Nice to see you, Emily. Hi, Emily. And faithful little Sammy. He remembered me. Who could ever forget? Of course, you realize, Cousin Susan, that my family sending me here is simply a futile gesture. A futile gesture? A forced separation will never change my feeling toward Peter. Never. We're definitely engaged. Engaged? Oh, really, Emily. Engaged. I consider him the most sophisticated, handsome, thoroughly fine man I ever met. Why, Emily, do you mean that all is over between you and me? And how about me? George, dear, and sweet little Sammy, I know this is hard on you, but I know you both respect me enough as a person to honor the way I feel. Try to look upon me as as a sister. Well, I'll try, Emily. I mean, uh, sis. <laughs> uh, take your bags. The car's over here, Emily. I'll never look upon her as a sister. Never. Oh, good morning, Mr. Harvey. Oh, good morning, patients. Come in. Thanks. Uh, Miss Armstrong up? Just finishing breakfast, Mr. Harvey. You knew where to find her. Oh, good morning, Susan. Oh, hello, George. Well, uh, how is Sister Emily this morning? I thought I heard her getting up a few minutes ago. Hmm. Hey, about this so-called engagement, uh, you don't think it's serious? No, I don't think so, George. But she does seem to have a gift for getting herself involved with older men, as you recall. Oh, now, Susan, I was entirely innocent. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, how old do you think this Peter Andrews is? Any idea? I think I thought it better not to discuss the subject last night. Maybe a good night's rest will make the engagement less definite. Oh, I guess you're right, Susan. A little change, a different perspective. These things blow over pretty quickly at her age. I hope so. Because in a sense, she's my responsibility good now. Morning, cousin Susan. And dear George. Dear good George. Dear good George. That's better. Sleep well, Emily? As well as one could expect when one is torn from the arms of one's fiancé. Emily! I feel it only fair to warn you, cousin Susan... I am not unpacking my bag. Well, Emily, uh, won't you things get a little wrinkled? Courageous, resourceful. Peter will come for me and find me. Emily, make up your mind to it. This Peter Andrews is not coming looking for you, so go upstairs and unpack. I could have expected more understanding, Cousin Susan. But I don't hold it against you. Not knowing Peter, dear, you couldn't possibly know the depths of our passion. 
Farewell, George. Hmm? Oh, uh, farewell, uh, Emily, farewell. Well. <laughs> George, do you think this could be more serious than we thought? The engagement? No, no, of course not, Susan. I know Emily, and I know that oh, this... Oh, uh, Miss Susan, this just came, a telegram. Telegram? Who, from whom? Well, I don't know, Miss Susan. I, I held it up to the light, but couldn't see a thing. Here. <laughs> kind of bad to me. Oh. What is it, Susan? From Emily's mother. Peter Andrews left the city last night. Have reason to believe he might be coming to find Emily. Please take every possible step to prevent their getting together. Joe. Oh, really, Joe? Well, what do you know? Uh, now, don't worry, Susan. I'll think of something. Uh, how about chaining her to the bed? Oh, now, be serious, George. Well, I thought I was. There's an early morning train, Miss Susan. If he left last night, he might be here even now. Uh, George, look, you go down to the paper. Let me know if you hear anything. I'd better stay right here with Emily. All right, Susan, all right. And don't worry. Now. Don't worry? Suppose she runs off with this Peter Andrews. What am I going to tell her mother and father? You haven't lost a daughter. You have just gained a son. George! <laughs> morning. Is Miss Armstrong in? Nobody's in yet. Anything I can do for you? Well, what I really wanted was Miss Armstrong's address. Why? Well, there's a girl visiting her and... Aha! Hmm? I wonder what she sees in you. Emily, you know her? I'm one of her dearest friends. Well, then you don't mind giving me her address. I'd rather die. Look, I'm appealing to you as a fellow man. My father might be coming after me. I'm pretty sure he is, and I haven't got much time. That's very uh, heartbreaking. But you... Good morning, Sammy. Oh, uh, who's your friend? Uh, Mr. Harvey, this is Emily's fiancé, Mr. Andrews. No. He wants her address. It's a matter of life and death, Mr. Harvey. Uh, look, Peter, why don't you just go on home? Emily will be back in a few weeks. Never. And I... Though the world may strive to keep us apart, love shall conquer all. Good day, Mr. Harvey. Well... Emily's a nice girl, Mr. Harvey, but she lacks taste. Why choose him when she could have me? It's a hard choice for any girl, Sammy. I'd better call Miss Armstrong and warn her that Lockenbar is in town. What could she see in him, Mr. Harvey? What? Well, yeah, women look at these things differently than men, Sammy. To a woman, he might be mature, sophisticated, utterly charming. I think I'll stop working so hard on my personality. If it's all blind chance, I'm just as well off the way I am. <laughs> Yes? Uh, Miss Armstrong. That's right. Uh, may I come in, Miss Armstrong? Uh, my name is Andrews, Peter Andrews. You certainly, come right in. Peter Andrews? You're Peter Andrews? You've heard of me, then, from Emily. Well, yes. I, I mean, no. No, indeed. You are Emily's cousin. Emily? Cousin? Uh, yes, yes, I am. Oh, good. Uh, may I come in and sit down? Uh, is she here? Who? Little Emily. No, no, no. She, she's not here, Mr. Andrews. Uh, expecting her back. Well, that's hard to say. But she has been here. Has been here? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, for Christmas, uh, uh, two years ago. Or, or was it three? Oh, I see. Well, apparently I've been the victim of some wrong information. So I won't go into the details of Mr. why... Mr. Andrews, just what is your feeling toward Emily? Well, I'm very fond of little Emily. Very fond indeed. You might call it a kind of uh, parental feeling. If you'll excuse me, Mr. Andrews, I'm very busy this morning. Oh, of course. And if you'll permit me to say it, Miss Armstrong, I'm not altogether sorry some wrong information brought us together. And just what do you mean by that? Just that when one encounters such charm and beauty, one doesn't pass silently by without paying tribute. Do you think you're just a little encumbered to be going around paying tribute? Encumbered? Well, I've been a widower for 15 years, if that's what you're referring to, Miss Armstrong. That's not what I'm referring to, and you know it. Goodbye, Mr. Andrews. Not goodbye, Miss Armstrong. Just uh, till we meet again. And we shall. Charming woman. Utterly charming. 
charming. But I had no idea in the world what she was talking about. Will there be anything else, Miss Susan? I don't think so, Patience. Finished, George? Ah, I'll finish, Susan. Wonderful dinner, Patience. Excellent, Patience. I enjoyed it. As much as a woman in my position could, of course. Oh, of course. Uh, shall we go in the other room, all? I want to have a little talk with you, Emily. Oh, certainly, Cousin Susan. <laughs> now, I think you might as well know, Emily, that um, Peter Andrews was here today. Here? Today? And you didn't tell me? I had good reason. He stopped in at the paper, too. Oh, then you both met him. Isn't he utterly captivating? Mm, well... Unfortunately, yes. Huh? Emily, there are some things I have to say to you. Your age, to begin with. Seventeen. Sixteen, barely. And although you could be considered very attractive... Yes, indeed. Thank you, George. Mentally, you're a long way from the maturity necessary to... Well, to, to even think of a man like uh, Peter Andrews. Oh, I don't know. Well, Susan. Please, George. <laughs> I met him today. Well, so did I. In any case, Emily, In I... any case, you don't want me to see him, is that it? Emily. Cousin Susan, no matter what you or the world may do, Peter and I belong positively to one another. And sooner or later, we shall find each other like... like Damon and Pythias. Good night. Uh, Emily, uh, <laughs> Damon and Pythias were men, you know. George... You two have turned against me. Peter, Peter, we have only each other. Well, you were certainly a big help, George. Well, Susan, she couldn't be serious about this Peter character. It, it, it's nothing to worry about at all. I utterly fail to understand how you can sit there and calmly say this. All nothing... right, all right. Much against my better judgment, Susan, I'll step in and settle this thing. How? Well, it's simple. I'll explain to poor old Pete that Emily has reverted to her former flame. Not you, George. Me. It won't be strictly true, of course, but I think Peter will accept it. Why should he? Well, for one reason, he... Well, Susan, why shouldn't he? Why shouldn't he? Uh, George. All right. All right. Put yourself in Emily's place. Which of us would you prefer? Which? Uh, now, George, I only It's meant quite that... all right, Susan. If that's the type you prefer, it's perfectly all right with me. But just remember, I've seen him. George... Maybe I should have taken a closer look. Back to our two stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, and the second act of our story. Right now, it's a pretty complicated story. Since Susan thinks her young cousin Emily has fallen under the spell of mature, handsome Peter Andrews. Actually, it's Peter Andrews Jr. that Emily is involved with. But, well, anyway, Susan and George are a good bet to complicate things a little more before they get straightened out. Dear friend, Emily, Mr. Harvey. Sammy, Emily is about to become engaged to someone else, although she doesn't know it. Miss Armstrong is afraid of this affair with Peter Andrews being serious, so I'm about to step in. How? I just tell him that uh, I've taken his place in Emily's heart. He thereupon takes off like a bird, and everyone is happy. It's bound to lead to other complications, Mr. Harvey. That's where you're wrong, Sammy. The idea is absolutely... Here he comes. Mr. Harvey... Are you a reporter on this paper? That I am, Peter, that I am. I've got a story for you, Mr. Harvey. A fiancé is being kept from her fiancé practically by force in this town. No. In gross violation of the Bill of Rights and the Constitution, Emily is being held virtual prisoner. And I demand that the world shall know and judge. Uh, Pete, old boy, were you aware of the fact that Emily is slightly, uh, shall we say, fickle in her affections? That's not true. We've been practically engaged for practically two weeks. Nevertheless, old man, another has entered her life. An old flame has been rekindled. No. It's practically a forest fire. Uh, please, Sammy. 
I demand to know who it is. I'm sorry, my boy. Neither of us wanted to hurt you in any way. No. You? You mean now Emily's engaged to you? Engaged? Well, I was bigger than both of them. Sammy, please. This could very well ruin my whole life. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Peter. Oh, perfidy. Thy name is woman. (laughs) Worked like a charm, eh, Sammy? A little ingenuity in these problems can be solved like nothing at all. Dear, dear George. Emily, where did you come from? I came in the back way, dear George, and I heard all. All? Well, you see, Emily, I was just... Oh, isn't it the most thrilling thing in the world, George? What? You and me, engaged. Engaged? Oh, now, Emily, wait. Wait, just a minute. Hold everything. Won't Cousin Susan be surprised when she hears the news? Susan? Well, Emily, we mustn't tell Susan, or... uh, Well, uh, I'll tell her uh, sometime, but not you. I understand, dear George, and I respect you for it. Well, that's something, but as far as our being engaged... Oh, it's our secret, George. Our hidden, beautiful secret. I won't tell a soul. Sammy, I... I... How did I get into this thing? That's not the thing to worry about, Mr. Harvey. No? The tough one is, how are you going to get out? Has Emily gone out, Miss Susan? Well, after all, I couldn't lock her in, Patience. It can only go so far. You can go a little farther, Miss Susan. What do you mean? This Peter Andrews, I... I get the idea he might possibly be interested in you if you'd give him just a very small amount of encouragement. Patience. I couldn't. I really couldn't. Well, she's your cousin, not mine. The door. Do you think it might be? If it is, shall I let him in? Well... I'll let him in. How do you do? Is Miss Armstrong at home? Oh, she certainly is, and you're Mr. Andrews. Uh, come in. Thank you, but you knew my name. Well, Miss Armstrong has been telling me about you. Oh? Uh, she's right in there. Miss Armstrong? Well, Mr. Andrews, oh, come in, sit down. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Is uh, Emily at home? Well, as a matter of fact, she isn't. You're disappointed? As a matter of fact, no. I guess I was just using Emily as a as a pretext for coming. You don't mind? Well, I... Good. Then we won't have to discuss Emily at all. Don't you think we should? Miss Armstrong, may I be perfectly frank with you? Please do. Since I came here yesterday and met you, the reason for my originally coming to Hillsdale has assumed less and less importance. Would you be surprised if I asked to call on you again very soon? Mr. Andrews, uh, nothing about you could surprise me in any way at all. Really? Uh, Shall we say uh, tonight? Tonight. Uh, But let's keep it strictly between us, shall we? Oh, I much prefer it that way. Much. I should imagine. Hmm? Oh, well, uh, until tonight. Until tonight. Uh, Goodbye. Goodbye. At least I'll be keeping him out of trouble. Or will I? Susan, I'll say. Susan, I was entirely blameless. I was a puppet of fate, and what happened was... Oh, I'm sorry. I hurt you. Oh, not a bit. Uh, you? No, not at all. I guess I had something else in my mind. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so did I. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I'll uh, have to concentrate more, I guess. Yes, me too. <laughs> what am I laughing about? He came out of Susan's house. Susan? Susan, are you at home? Oh, my goodness, George. Couldn't you wait for me to open the door? Uh, I'm sorry, Susan. I, uh... Did a man just leave here? A man? What kind of man? Don't evade the question, Susan. Not that I'm jealous, Susan, but when a stranger leaves here in the middle of the day and you refuse to tell who he is... George, you know who he is. Peter Andrews. Peter, that is the most ridiculous story I ever heard in my life. What? Not that I care one bit who it was, Susan, but you might have made up a better story than that. I just left Peter Andrews at the paper. The paper? What was he doing there? Well, he... Well, never mind. The point is, Susan, 
Who was the man that just George, left... are you asking these silly questions just to cover up something you've done? Are you? Me cover up something? Me? My life is an open book, Susan, and I don't mind... George, dear, you're here, and you told Cousin Susan. I... Told me what, Emily? Why, about our engagement, of course. Whose engagement? You see, Susan... George's the... engagement to me. Isn't it just too perfectly wonderful? Susan, I... Well, go... so your life is an open book, is it George? Well, actually, the whole thing and is just a... what sordid chapter are you engaged in writing now? Susan, you don't believe... Oh, that... yes, I do. You're leaving, George? Well, I... Oh, did I say something wrong? Well, I... I think somebody did. Don't push and her. And you can I, go not... to your room, Emily, and you can consider your engagement over. Is there something the matter with me? I'm losing more fiancés. Is Mr. Harvey here? I changed my mind. I came back. Mr. Andrews, Mr. Harvey is busy. And what did you come back for? I can't give her up without a struggle. Emily, I'm going to fight for her. Mr. Harvey's already fighting with Miss Armstrong. He hasn't got time to fight you, too. Fighting with Miss Armstrong? What about? I can't figure it out, but partly about you. You know, there must be more to you than meets the eye. But I've never even met Miss Armstrong. What? My father tells me she's very nice, but I Your father? He's here in town? What's his name? The same as mine, Peter Andrews. Only he's senior and I'm junior, of course. It figures... You know, I'm beginning to get the plot. What plot? Never mind. But why don't you and your father both show up at Miss Armstrong's tonight? Why? Well, Mr. Harvey will be there and Emily, and it might prove kind of interesting. Well, all right. But you can warn Mr. Harvey. I'll fight for her, and I'll use violence if necessary. Sure. Poor Mr. Harvey. Always the best of intentions, but universally misunderstood. Good evening, Mr. Harvey. Miss Armstrong's in the living room. Oh, good, Patience. I'll go right in and... She's uh... with Miss Emily. Oh. Well, the time has come for a showdown, Patience. I'll go in anyway. Good luck, Mr. Harvey. Good evening, Susan. Emily? Why, dear, dear George. What brings you here, dear George? I've determined to have a showdown, Susan. We'll straighten things out once and for all. Well, that would be a novelty. But Cousin Susan... Excuse me, Miss Susan. Mr. Peter Andrews is here. Uh Aha. Now, Susan, now we'll explode your story about Peter Andrews being the man I saw leaving the house this afternoon. Show him in, Patience. Somehow I feel just like a bailiff. Uh, In here, Mr. Andrews. Emily... Emily, I've come back. Well, that's very nice of you, Peter, but really... Who is this? I'm Peter Andrews, Miss Armstrong. What? Uh Uh-huh. Your story isn't standing up very well, is it, Susan? George, excuse me once again, Miss Susan. Another gentleman, the one who was here this afternoon. Oh, well, show him in. Wait, wait, Patience. I'll give you one last chance, Susan. Before he comes in, tell us his name. His real name. I told you, George. Peter Andrews. Stubborn to the end, eh? All right. You leave me no choice. Show him in, Patience. Uh, Yes, Your Honor. Uh, I mean, Mr. Harvey. Well, good evening, all. I see we're... Uh, Wait, wait. Uh, Hold it. Would you give us your name, sir? Your true name? Uh, Certainly. Peter Andrews. A likely story. George. Just let him go, Emily. Whatever happens, he deserves. My case, Susan, is closed. I know not what end is to be served by this feeble deception, but... What's he talking about, Father? I'm as confused as you are, son. And, well, you might be, for... Father. Son. George, this is quite apparently Mr. Andrews, Sr. and Mr. Andrews, Jr. Correct. And may I ask who you are, sir? Uh, you... you don't know? No. Well, is there any way we could leave it that way? Oh, George. Oh, wait a minute. Miss Armstrong, you didn't know there were two of us. You thought that that Emily and I were... (laughs) Well, it it was a simple mistake. It could happen to anyone. But why does it always have to happen to me? (laughs) 
Our stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, will be back in just a moment. Susan, you know something? Know what, George? You were just as mistaken about this whole affair as I was, but I'm the one who ends up looking ridiculous. Why is that? Well, couldn't that be due to the fact that I didn't act like a, a prosecuting attorney? Well, it might be that you just don't care as much as I do. Why, George, that's the nicest thing you've said to me all week. Of course I care. Uh, uh, how about a little proof uh, on account? All right. There. Hmm. Thank you. George, hmm? uh, does this mean we're engaged? What? Engaged? Well... Not that I wouldn't like to be, Emily. I, I, I mean, Susan, oh, but... Oh, uh, George, hmm? I wasn't serious. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I, uh, with oh. women, you never know, you know. <laughs> Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray will be back next week in another exciting comedy adventure in the gay new series, Bright Star. This is Wendell Niles inviting you to join us then.